Good morning, everybody. Are we all? There we go. I am live. I am here. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Here we are live. Wednesday on Wednesday. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Arise with Sally Goodwin. I am here, present and accounted for on Wednesday, the, let me make sure I know what day it is and time it is, Wednesday the 3rd of May 2023 and it is the 12th of ER 5783. The 12th of ER 5783. Good morning, amazing arena. Lovely to see you, my friend. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everybody, it's so good to see you all this morning. Welcome to Arise with me, Sally Goodwin. Good morning, special Sam. Lovely to have you on. Welcome, welcome. Oh, just shifting myself a little bit here okay there we go that's better right so just um load shedding news the lights will go off <laughs> shortly um i think but hopefully the lights that some beautiful friends have gifted me will stay on um otherwise you will have to listen to me in the dark but um i'm trusting that my other lights will stay on and um, that if the main light goes off. Good morning to you, dear Conrad. Lovely to see you this morning. Good morning, Radiant Renee. Lovely to have you all on. Good morning, beautiful Bertha. Lovely to see you this morning. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. I trust you all had an incredible long weekend. Um, just for those of you, I have a... Not a million, that's an enormous exaggeration, but I have a huge amount of unanswered WhatsApp messages. My long weekend was incredibly busy. Uh, you know, for those of you who, who know, good morning, Volna, lovely to see you on this morning. Yes, please like and share, like and share, people. I'd appreciate it if you liked and shared. Um, you know, for those of you who understand this, how sometimes you can go weekend in and weekend out without anything, no plans, just, you know, you and your family just doing their thing. And then one weekend, you just have an enormous, like all of these things on and you literally rushing from one engagement to the next. And I am not a social butterfly by any means at all. I'm actually... Um, you might be surprised for those of you who don't know me personally. I'm I'm an introvert by nature, um, and so I struggle with too many things and too many people and too many different environments and atmospheres. Um, and um, you know, um, in, I'm a prophet and I'm a feeler in the spirit, and so you know it all gets a bit much so this weekend was just packed for various different reasons we had just one function after another function after another function after another function and um it left me flat at the end just flat completely flat and so i have a list as long as my arm of um of whatsapps from people that i just have not got to answering yet and so but i will get to all of that please those of you who have messaged me for various reasons <coughs> sorry apologies <coughs> and i haven't answered yet i shall mm. I shall, yes. <coughs> oh, my goodness. Pray, people. I have this word throat thing starting, and the message that I'm bringing this morning is important. <clears throat> And I feel the resistance already. Just the load shift in load shedding, the 
the um I'm concerned about the lights lasting for the whole time that I'm on. Uh, just please, for those of you who intercede for me, please just intercede that I can get this message out. The resistance has been strong. <laughs> Beautiful Bertha, uh, <clears throat> I have a bit, probably not as much as I <clears throat> need to hence the throat mm. anyway let's not dwell on me and so also you know um, that I love to respond to all of your comments the moment there we go the lights have just gone off please Jesus let these lights stay on I love to respond to all of your comments as soon as I finish my post I upload it to YouTube and then I respond to everybody. I have an appointment at 10 o'clock because of my later live time I might not get a chance to respond immediately. I will respond just probably later in the day. Okay, let us get on to the message for today so that I can just get it out because it is burning in my spirit. Today's message ladies and gentlemen I just would like to warn you today's message is a difficult one. Uh, and it is a um, a stern message. I'm just being obedient. Okay, so today's message is called Yar Emeus and Ichabod. Um, and it is, if you are counting the Omer along with our Messianic Jewish friends or our Orthodox Jewish friends, um, if you count, oh, but if you are involved in counting the Omer, then we are on day 27 of counting the Omer. And at nightfall this evening, we will move on to day 28. So that is where we are in terms of counting the Omer. We are in the month of Iyar. We have been learning about Iyar and Issachar and being like the sons of Issachar. And this message then kind of comes off of that whole encouragement to be like the sons of Issachar. So when I brought my message on Friday, I spoke about how the message on Friday was, um, was it on Friday? Yes, on Friday. It was the 7th of Issachar, the 7th of ER. Today is the 12th of ER. Friday was the 7th of ER. And I spoke about, you know, the sons of Issachar and all of the sevens that were involved on Friday. And um, what if you look back in the history of the Israelites, in the history of the Jewish people, and if you have followed all of my teachings on the Hebrew calendar, so Arise with Sally Goodwin is three years old, it turned three in April. So April 2020, I went online in obedience to the Lord um, for the first time. And it was an enormous step for me because as I've said to all of you now, I'm, I'm actually an introvert by nature. I have no issue with public speaking, amazingly enough, but um, going live on social media has never been my, it was never my aim in life. And, um, and I had to have had to journey with the Lord and work through an enormous amount of insecurities and things to reach this point. But here I am, uh, three years later, still doing this uh, in obedience to the Lord. And um, and so the if you if you have journeyed with me from the beginning and and followed all my teachings year in and year out on the Hebrew calendar, you will notice many times where I have showed you how when things have happened for the Jewish people on specific dates, how almost through the years, through the centuries, even. The, the things have happened on those same dates, almost as if there are specific days or dates that are cursed, if you want to use the word cursed, um, in terms of the history of the Jewish people, that where things have happened. Now, we can also look back and we can see where God has redeemed things. You know, God has come back and he has redeemed land. He has redeemed days. He has redeemed times because he is a God of redemption. Let us not forget that. He is a God of redemption. Good morning, special Sylvia. Good morning, joyful Jen. Oh, yay, you get to see Caleb today. Wonderful. So God is a God of redemption. Absolutely. But but he also need, needs and requires us often to co-labor with him in order for him to be able to redeem. So if we look at the seventh of ER, for example, the seventh of ER in history in like uh, the 40s or I can't remember the exact year date now. 
but it was when the new walls that Nehemiah um, oversaw the building of around the city of Jerusalem, that was when the new walls were dedicated. So they had been completed and they were dedicated. So the seventh of Iyar was seen, was seen as the day or has been noted down in the history of the Jewish people as the day when the new walls that Nehemiah built were dedicated. And in ancient times, the seventh of Iyar was actually seen. Good morning, Isana, my darling. Lovely to see you. Um, the seventh of Iyar was actually seen as a holiday. It was it was celebrated as a holiday because it was seen as a dedication of the new walls. Then, if you move on from there you will see that just over 500 years later the Jews surrendered those walls to the Romans on the same day. I want you to pay attention to that. On the same day that the walls that Nehemiah built around Jerusalem were dedicated over just over 500 years later, on that same day, the Jews surrendered those walls to the Romans and the Romans took over the city of Jerusalem. I want you also to note that 500 year period. It wasn't an exact 500 years, but it was more or less 500 years. And I want you to understand that what happened in that 500 years was the Jewish people once again moved away from God. Once again, they moved away from God. So just keep that in the back of your mind. That's the seventh of ER. Then in the, again, in Jewish history, in 1298, on the seventh of ER, in 1298, the Rindt Flash massacre of Jews began in Rottingen, Germany, and spread through more than 150 communities. I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that there is no coincidence with God. And it, as the, you know that God grieves the same way we grieve when terrible things happen, like the Holocaust and massacres of the Jewish people. But there is no coincidence with him. And God requires us to be like the sons of Issachar, to pick up patterns in days and times and time periods so that we can understand where it is that we are going wrong in co-laboring with him so that we get to move with him. And if you have paid any attention to the teachings of the Hebrew calendar over the years, you will see how many times I mention things that have happened to the Jewish people over centuries, that where the things have happened on the same day over and over and over again, because redemption has not been able to come because the Jewish people have not sought redemption for those specific things on those specific days, because they do not know because they have not realized, because they do not know how. So that, that is the, ten, the seventh of ER. Now we're going to look at the tenth of ER. And this is what happened on the tenth of ER. So today is the twelfth of ER. The tenth of ER was two days ago, which would be Monday. Okay. So as we know, if we read the book of 1 Samuel, we know that Eli was the chief priest of the temple in 1 Samuel. And Eli had two sons. And Eli's two sons, because the priesthood was passed down generationally, Eli's two sons were taken over from Eli. But Eli's sons did not walk in the ways of their father. They did not follow the priestly, they broke the rules, they were doing the wrong things, and Eli was not correcting them. There were occasions when he did speak to them, and he did, I mean, if you go to 1 Samuel chapter 2, he, it says in verse 12, the sons of Eli were base and worthless, they did not know or regard the Lord. They were base and worthless. They did not know or regard the Lord. And then it tells you further down how they did not do that, how they were, how they were base and worthless. And then in verse 23, Eli says to them, why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all the people. No, my sons, it is no good report which I hear the Lord's people spreading abroad. And in verse 25, it says, yet they did not listen to their father. So in other words, Eli remonstrated with them. He did, he brought up what they were doing wrong, but he doesn't seem to have ever actually done anything about it. He doesn't seem to have, his warnings were toothless. 
His sons did not respect him sufficiently to actually take note or take heed of what he said. And God had already decided what would happen, the consequence of what would happen. And through Samuel, God had laid out those consequences to Eli. And Eli knew what those consequences were going to be. And so Samuel was going to be raised up in place of Eli, which was clearly spoken in the rest of, of, of um, that, that chapter. But understand something that this did not happen immediately. So Eli was still high priest. His sons were still there. They were doing the wrong things. God didn't strike them immediately the very first time they did something wrong. They, you know, there was a grace period, an opportunity for things to be corrected. There was a warning spoken over them. There, was a, there were warnings spoken over them. Then there was a judgment issued. And the judgment came forth. And Eli was told, this is what will happen. In the meantime, God had already moved Samuel in. Samuel was already raised, going to be raised up to take over um, Eli's place, to stand in Eli's place. And this is all happening. Now we get to what happened, and we know the story in 1 Samuel chapter 4. We should know the story. And so what happens is Israel goes out to war against the Philistines, and they lose. Okay, so they lose, and the Philistines kill about 4,000 men, and so they, they decide, that they, because they realize, or they worry because they say, well, God is not with us, and so they say, let us bring the Ark of the Covenant here, because when the Ark of the Covenant is with us, God is among us, and he will save us from the power of our enemies. So they go, and they bring the Ark of the Covenant, and because the Ark of the Covenant has to go with the priests, Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, go with with the Ark of the Covenant of God. And what, what happens is Israel shouts with a great shout because the Ark of the Covenant is now with them and the earth resounds, it tells us in two in one chapter one Samuel chapter four, verse five, and the Philistines hear this noise and they understand that the Ark of the Covenant is now with the Israelites and it's Israelites, and it says in verse seven that the Philistines were afraid and they said, God has come into the camp. Woe to us for such a thing has not happened before. And then they say how great God is and how he delivered the Israelites from the Egyptians, etc., etc. But then in verse 9, they, they gird their loins. These are the Philistines, the people who are against the Israelites. They say to themselves, be strong and acquit yourselves like men, O you Philistines. So they are not going to back down. They are well aware that they are now not just fighting the Israelites, but the God of the Israelites. But they are not going to back down. They are going to go into war like men and face their, face the consequences. In some ways, they are acquitting themselves better in battle than the Israelites are or have in previous battles. And what happens? The Israelites lose. Even with the Ark of the, of the Covenant, there was a great slaughter. 30,000 foot soldiers of Israel fall. The Ark of God is taken by the Philistines and the sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas are slain as was foretold in 1 Samuel 2 verse 34. And then a man from the tribe of Benjamin runs and he meets with Eli. He tells Eli what has happened and Eli falls over dead. Eli falls over dead. He was 98 years old and he was a big, apparently a very big, heavy man. And he falls backward and breaks his neck and dies. Now Eli, son Phineas, was married and his wife was about to give birth to their child. And she, when she hears this devastating news that not only is her father-in-law dead, but her husband is dead and the Ark of the Covenant has been captured. Now you can imagine the shame and the, that is come, going to come down on that family because they have been the priestly family that has allowed the Ark of the Covenant to be captured by the Philistines. And that is now going to reflect on her as the, one of the surviving members of the family. She herself bows herself and gives birth and she dies. But before she dies, she names her child Ichabod. And that name, basically the, the summary of what that name means is inglorious. And as she dies, she says, the glory has departed from Israel. 
The glory has departed from Israel. That on the 10th of Iyar, which was two days ago, it is written in Jewish history that this happened on the 10th of Iyar. On the 10th of Iyar, the Ark of the Covenant was captured by the Philistines and Ichabod was born and it was noted that the glory of the Lord had departed from Israel. I want you to just take a moment and 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 appreciate the severity of what had happened. Now. On the 23rd of January 2022. So in January last year, I brought a word to a church at the time. It wasn't aimed at the church that I was in at the time. It was just a word to the church, global church. And it started off, I quoted, I, I, I used a quote by Carl Pierce which says we are in a time in history where we can no longer afford another meeting, another conference, or even another service. We can only afford an encounter of God that doesn't just change our day, but our entire life. And I brought this message about how we can, uh, on the old wineskin and the new wineskin, using the and using the seven churches in Revelation as an example of what we have to walk away from and what we have to walk into if we want to be a people of the new wineskin. And part of what God said to me to bring in that message was this, when Jesus is at the center, then the Holy Spirit will move in power and glory and bring transformation. When Jesus is at the center, then the Holy Spirit will move in power and glory and bring transformation. Hold on. Hold on to all of this. I'm going to tie it all together. I know it's all bits and pieces. I'm going to bring it all together. On the 27th of September 2022, I released a word on Life CBN for 2023, where God gave me the word for 2023. Now we need to know that from the beginning of 2023, we began and 5783 in the Hebrew calendar, we began a new seven year cycle. It was the end of a end of a Shemitah year, 5782, the end of a Shemitah year, we began a new seven-year cycle. This new seven-year cycle will end at the end of this decade. I have preached so many sermons on the importance of this, the significance of this decade. And God said to me, behold, the sword of time entering the gates with the full power of the Trinity. And I can't go into all, otherwise I won't get to the end of my message today. But if you haven't heard all of those messages of mine, message me in the comments and maybe I'll reiterate some of them over the next few days. Behold the sword of time entering the gates with the full power of the Trinity. And he spoke about turning, Jesus turning over the tables in the church. He spoke about the sword of time. Pay attention to this next seven year cycle. Pay attention to the significance of this decade that we are in. And he spoke about the fact that the, I, I heard a voice from heaven shouting, expose, expose, expose. 
Now we have seen a lot of exposure within the church globally, a lot of exposure within church leadership. There is going to be more. Gird your loins, there is going to be more because Jesus is turning over the tables in the temple. He is done with the house of his father being used as a den of thieves. He is done. He is done. He is, I asked God, what does it look like, Lord, for the, for the full force of the Trinity to come through the gateways? And what are the gates? And God said to me, it starts with the church, Sally. It always begins with my church, with my people, the spiritual gateways, the living gateways. But then it goes on. So it begins with the gateways to my churches, to my people. But then it moves on to the gateways of my cities, the gateways of regions, the gateways of businesses, the gateways of individual hearts. I am coming in my full force. I said to him, Lord God, what does that look like? How will we know when you have entered in? with the full force of the Trinity and he said you will experience the weighty presence of my Lordship in other words he said to me Sally you will be unable to stand under the presence of my glory in the same way that it says in the Old Testament that the priests were unable to stand when the glory of the Lord rested in the temple, the priests were unable to stand when the full glory and power of the Trinity has entered the gateway of your church, you will experience the weighty presence of God, you will be unable to stand in the presence of the Lord. The weighty, weighty presence of the Lord. And I said to him, God, what does it look like for us to feel you as the full force of the Trinity? And he said this to me, he said, you have had seasons of knowing me as father. You have had seasons of learning about Jesus and you have had seasons of knowing and experiencing the power of my Holy Spirit. But in this season, you are going to learn of the personhood of my Holy Spirit. Once Jesus is at the center and you know and have learned of the personhood of my Holy Spirit, the full force of my Trinity will be able to enter into the gateways of your church, your community, your, your city, your own inner spiritual heart gateways. And you will experience the weighty glory of my presence. And you will know that you have entered into the new. That is how you will know that you have entered into the new. And then I said to him, God, how will we know? if we have missed it. And he took me to Luke. To Luke chapter 24. Because it was in the same month of Iyar when Jesus had been resurrected from the dead, but he hadn't yet gone back to be seated with his father. And so he was still appearing to his disciples after he had been resurrected from the dead. And so it was at this same, in this month of Iyar, that Jesus appeared on the road to Emmaus with his disciples, the two that he walked alongside. And it says, I'm reading here from the Passion Translation. It says that, so we know that he walked alongside them on the road to Emmaus. He says to them in Luke 24, verse 20, uh, oh, sorry, the words are very tiny and the light is not very bright. Verse 25, Jesus said to them, why are you so thick headed? 
Why do you find it so hard to believe every word the prophets have spoken? Wasn't it necessary for Christ the Messiah to experience all these sufferings and then afterward to enter into his glory? Then he carefully unveiled to them the revelation of himself throughout the scripture. And it says, if we move forward, they urge him to stay with them. They still don't know it's Jesus. They urge him to stay with them. He goes with them into the village. Then he joins them at the table for supper. He takes bread and blesses it. He breaks it and gives it to them. All at once, their eyes were opened and they realized it was Jesus. Then suddenly, in a flash, he vanishes before their eyes. So only he walks the road with them. He calls them thick-headed this Jesus meek and mild that we always talk about he calls them thick-headed he they they beg him to stay because he's now explained the scriptures to them in ways that they've never thought before only when he sits and eats with them and breaks bread with them do they realize it's Jesus once they realize it's him he vanishes immediately then it says stunned they looked at each other and said why didn't we recognize it was him didn't our hearts burn with the flames of holy passion while we walked beside him? How often do we read that verse? Did our hearts not burn within us? Did our hearts not burn within us? In the Passion Translation, Brian Simmons says that that is as translated from the Greek text. The Aramaic manuscript reads, were not our hearts dull as he taught us. The Aramaic translation manuscript reads, were not our hearts dull as he taught us? Because the Aramaic words for burning and for dull are almost identical. Because as Jesus taught them the scripture and walked with them, were not their hearts dull within them? They didn't even realize it was him. It was only after he broke bread with them that suddenly their eyes were opened and then their hearts burned within them. And I released a word a while ago where I said that God is giving us a choice. Do our hearts burn within us for Jesus or are our hearts dull? And God gives us grace. We have had so much grace. We have had 500 and something years of grace since the Reformation began. 500 and something years of Reformation since Martin Luther King, not Martin Luther, Martin, since Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the church door. 500 plus years where we have seen church split after church split after church division after church division revelation after revelation after revelation after revelation of scripture 500 years plus of grace where God has given us time after time after time after time to get our act together as churches as a church around the globe and burn for Jesus and eventually yes God is a God of grace and his grace and his mercy is new every morning. But yes, eventually he says enough. God is a God of grace, but eventually one day Jesus is going to come back and there will be people on the earth for whom the grace will have run out. There will be people in the church for whom the grace will have run out. But we preach a message today about a grace that never runs out. That people think they have all the time in the world and they never have to make a choice. And compromise is absolutely fine because it's all okay because it doesn't matter. It does matter because we don't know when God has decided that his grace is when his grace is going to run out for certain things. His grace ran out for the Israelites eventually. Right through the Old Testament, he says about, about the Amalekites, about 
about um various people like that when they sit when the the, the fulfillment of their quota of sin, where they have reached, they are given a, an amount of sin that they get to fulfill. And then they've reached that point and then he's done with them. And he sent Jesus. He sent Jesus to give us extra grace and mercy and a road directly to him to make it easier. to be even more gracious. Not so that we could click our fingers, turn our heads and say, oh, okay, we'll just live our lives any way we choose and then you're still going to just say it's okay. Not for that reason. And so the more I have pressed into this word about the Trinity coming in and about the experiencing of this weighty glory of his presence, the more he has impressed upon me that the opposite of the new will be Ichabod. It will be the departing of his glory. And there will be churches on this earth who will con that will continue to run, that will continue to, to do their thing because they do not rely on the presence of God to keep going. They rely purely on their people and their programs. And for them, there will be a moment in time where there will be an Ichabod moment and they won't even know and the glory of the Lord will depart and they will be done. They will be done. God is a God of love. He is a God of grace. He is a God of of, of mercy. He is a God of forgiveness. But he is a God of judgment. He is a God of righteousness. He is a God of holiness. And he cannot stand by and watch while people who profess to be following his son to be walking in the image of his son. Compromise, righteousness, holiness, purity. The things that his son stood for, everything his son stood for. Because then what is the point of him hanging on that cross, suffering and dying? What was the point if we are going to turn around and say to people, it's okay, everything is okay, it is all okay. What was the point? We cannot imagine for one single moment that God's heart does not break over this. We cannot imagine for one single moment that he does not grieve more intensely than we grieve. And I have asked him, Lord God, are there intercessors among us who could go before you like Abraham and say, if they're just 10 righteous people, will you save that church? 
if there's just 10 righteous people. And I got a sense from him that it is possible in some places and in others, there is too much that has happened, too much that has gone on, too much arrogance, too much compromise, too much ignoring of the poor and the needy and the oppressed. And they have reached the fulfillment of what God has allowed them to walk in and their time is done. And it's not necessarily that you will see them, you know, wiped off the face of the earth, you know, um, don't come back and stone me as a, self prop, as a false prophet because you don't see, but you will see churches closing, you will see churches closing, but you might not see big, um, you know, names shutting down. But if you are a person whose heart burns for Jesus, you will go into places like that and you will feel ice cold. And you will know that Ichabod is there. And the glory of God has departed. And it's not only churches. It's not only churches. If you look at this, that Ichabod occurred on the 10th of ER in, Isra in Isra Israelite history, that was Monday. Look at the nations of the earth. And you look at what happened on Monday in some nations of the earth. Nations that at one stage would have called themselves Christian possibly still in some way might refer to themselves as Christian. Look at the chaos. Know that there were nations on the earth on Monday, on the 10th of ER, that had their Ichabod moment, where God removed his glory. Now, not from the people, there are individuals in those nations who burn for Jesus and they are the ones that stand like beacons in the darkness and hold it together and their nations should be on their knees thanking them. But God, We, I've, re I've released this message previously, but possibly it's time to relook at some of these messages because God adds things as well. He has added things for me. We are in a decade, this decade, this specific decade, the, this between 2021, 2020 and 2029, and 5780 to 5789. This specific decade is a decade of convergence. It is a decade where God's Kairos time and our Kronos time converge. That is one of the ways that God showed it to me. Where he is bringing his Kairos time, where he moves sovereignly into our Kronos time. He is moving sovereignly across the earth. There are things that he is, where he is just intervening in spaces and places and moving sovereignly to set things up for what is to come. He is still, he still, that there are still many things he will not do because he is waiting for us to co-labor with him. Many things. But there are some things where he can no longer wait for the church to move. And he will move sovereignly and set something up here, set something up there. 
And we need to be like the sons of Issachar and understand the times and the seasons of our God so that we can speak in to our churches and our nations. We need to have hearts that burn for Jesus. We cannot afford to have hearts that are dull while he teaches us. When we read the word, when we read the scriptures, when we read things, we can't read stories like the story of Ichabod and think, oh, well, that was Israel. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He sent Jesus so that the whole world was able to reach out to him. He didn't send Jesus and then his personality underwent a sudden change and he became a different God. He is the same God. And the things that he could not tolerate with Israel, he cannot tolerate today. He is still a God of righteousness. He is still a God of holiness. He is still a God of purity. That has not changed. But he sent his son so that we could be able to be forgiven for the sins that we commit. But that grace was not given so that we could continue on sinning intentionally. Or offering people compromise. That was never the intention. When you, what I've realized as well, is that people seek the power of the Holy Spirit. We want to see him move, signs, wonders, miracles, healings, all of that kind of thing. Have you ever gotten to know the person of the Holy Spirit? Because it's easy to think of God and Jesus sitting up on their heavenly thrones. But the Holy Spirit is with us and in us. And when you recognize him as a person and not just some kind of airy fairy wind blowing in the background, it's a lot more difficult to be impure and unholy and unrighteous knowing he's right there with you. I don't know about you, but I don't ever want to have an Ichabod moment. Not ever. Not ever. I want my heart to burn for Jesus until I meet him in person. I want the church to burn for Jesus so that we can set this world on fire for Jesus. And in this month of ER, that is going to be my prayer for each and every one of you, that you would encounter the personhood of the Holy Spirit and that your heart would burn for Jesus like never before. And that none of you who follow me will ever have an Ichabod moment. Sons of Issachar, let us arise. Let us arise. There is an urgency to the need to arise as the sons of Issachar in this time. Ladies and gentlemen, bless you. Love you all. I know that was a difficult word. Reflect on it. Process it. I will delve into bits of it as we go on. I'll, I know that possibly some of those teachings you haven't all heard and possibly some of you need a refresher. So let's, we'll look into some of those things as we move on over the next couple of days. And before we hit Shavuot, so we can fully experience the personhood of the Holy Spirit on Shavuot this year. Bless you all. Love you all. See you on Friday.
Have a wonderful Wednesday.